Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on the time you guys are watching this. It's your boy Mickey Fenty, aka Mickey Made It. If you're new to this channel, you know what to do to this channel. Subscribe right now. Also, if you want to support the brand, it's inspiredbydreams.shop. Preppy streetwear. We have everything. Snapbacks, hoodies, a little bit of everything for you to get to drip on. Dress outside of the box. Okay, today we're talking about Diddy. Now, I put a few things together for you guys. You guys got to understand at this certain point in time, Diddy is going through a lot. This is a deep situation and more details are coming in by the second, by the minute. And the more that comes in, you have to kind of like backtrack to put the story all together. So what I did today on this episode, I'm taking you back all the way up to this point on what's going on with this whole Diddy situation and the reason why he's getting so much time. And there's a lot of new things in there I want you guys to really check out. I can't really say it all. It's for you to understand and pick up on these little things that I throw in there for you guys to take a look at. Okay, if you're new to this channel, you already know what to do. Love you guys and thanks for the support. It's your boy Mickey, and I'll check you guys in a second. All right, let's get it. Ow. And I just want to say, you know, his son's again older, and I and I really honestly think that, you know, they're not gonna take the same path as him. So I don't want to wish them any bad or anything because I really do feel like there's gonna be some good that comes out of all of this, and I hope that that healing point could heal for everybody. It's just in God's hands at this point. Are you okay? Are you feeling okay? But there's a part in there that saddens me about his kids having to go through this. There's a, there's a part of me that is it's really sad to even see all of this. It's, it's, it's crazy how in today's media, this is the way things got to play out. But here we go. And I hope the mom, the whole grandma get better sleep. Come on, guys. Let's have a good day. I think this is just a case of just taking your lifestyle or just a little too far and just hurting people on the other end it just makes everything just puts it in a place of destruction I'm hoping at the end of this everybody can heal Diddy is going to jail. Quite some time ago, I talked about Puff Daddy. I talked about Homeland Security raiding his residence. When I talked about this, I made it clear that when Homeland Security comes after you, there's going to be charges. When we talked about the charges, as of today, he has been arrested, and this is his indictment. A couple of things that are interesting. Once, if you, they got all of his nicknames listed on the indictment. Puff, Sean Combs, Puff Daddy, P. Diddy, Diddy, P. D., and Love. Um... He has charged with racketeering. What is racketeering? The simplest way to describe it is racketeering is like some mob. Sh it's literally saying that you have a legal organization, but what the government says is your legal organization is doing illegal shit and trying to hide it. And that's what they're saying about Puff Daddy. Diddy's going to jail. We asked what is the difference between federal court prosecution and state court prosecution. Federal court prosecution, what ends up happening, the easiest way I describe it is the feds do the work before they arrest an individual usually. So they build their case. So they have a very large case, a good case against the person that they're going after. They spend a lot of time, a lot of money, a lot of energy going after somebody. State court cases, a lot of time they do the research and the work after they've already arrested somebody. Translation, if somebody comes to somebody and says, that guy hit me, that guy raped me, that guy stole from me, he gets arrested right then and there and then they start looking into it. Federal government, they take their time, energy, and effort and that's what they're doing against Diddy. Um, Diddy's going to jail. Why is that not a fair outcome? What he did here is on a magnitude of, of unlike anybody else you could imagine. A week after 
these public searches were televised. He gave his, us his passport. His children gave us his passport. He then paid off the mortgage entirely on his Miami home, $18 million. It's instructive that he's gonna have a bail package ready so that if he was arrested, he would have something ready so that he could get out the next day and show the judge he's taking this very seriously, which he is, which is why 12 days ago, Chris, when we thought there's an indictment that may be coming, he flew to New York the very next day. And that's an extraordinary move for a defendant who's been under investigation that he's been aware of for at least six months. He has done everything, everything somebody under investigation can do. I can't think of anything else that he could have done. He's fighting. He's fighting, he's innocent, and he's gonna be able to show it. Good morning, everybody. I'm back over here on Mapleton Drive and Homby Hills. Behind these shrubbery is the home of P. Diddy. Now folks, I want you to look at this street, okay? This home, these homes go for 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 million and more. Do you think for one moment that there's a tunnel under here? There's no tunnels, folks. That's a fabricated story. You think they got a tunnel from here to Jack Nicholson's house to the Playboy Mansion down the street? No way. You have any idea how much dirt that they got pulled out? The trucks that would be in this area? Everybody in this area would know if that happened. Not one person ever heard of it who lives in this area. So folks, let's get real about this here. There are no tunnels and there's no tunnel going to Jack Nicholson's home. I read the 14 page Diddy indictment so you don't have to. Let's break it down. So the first page details what we already know. Talking about how Diddy for years has been using his money, power and influence to abuse and coerce women and others around him to fulfill his own sick sexual desires. Doing so by creating an enterprise full of people that he enlisted to help him engage and engaging in themselves a multitude of crimes. These crimes being trafficking, arson, bribery, forced labor, transportation of prostitution, amongst other things. Page two talks about how Diddy engaged in a persistent pattern of abuse against women, manipulating them into highly orchestrated performances with male workers. Even going as far as to make arrangements for these male workers and for these victims to fly in so that they could perform these acts for him. To ensure that the victims would participate, he would threaten them with violence, commit acts of violence against them, distribute narcotics, threaten their careers and their livelihood. This paragraph right here even just talks about how, you know, Diddy's abuse has been widely known for years. It's nothing new. And it even details the assault that was carried out against Cassie Ventura that we saw on display for us on video a couple months ago, although she isn't named in this indictment. They even go as far as detailing how he tried to bribe, literally bribe the hotel security guard that intervened in that attack. Page three talks about how he used the Combs business and his name and likelihood, you know, to facilitate and cover up his abuse. Even going as far as using employees of his business to help him carry out these acts. Diddy and many others, whether knowingly or unknowingly, were members or associates of the Combs Enterprise or the Enterprise. Members and associates of the Enterprise engaged in, you know, various crimes like the ones that I stated earlier, amongst other activities. Pages four and five detail the overall objectives of the, you know, Combs Enterprise. And they start off pretty simple you know, as trying to operate as a global business in the media, entertainment, and lifestyle industries, preserving, protecting, promoting, and enhancing Diddy's image as a figurehead, musician, and entrepreneur in the entertainment industry. Now, of course, here's where it all starts to get weird. Enriching members who prove their loyalty to Diddy, as well as willingness to cover up his crimes and making sure they could secure absolute loyalty from members of the enterprise through acts of violence and threats. Members of the enterprise of asked were also expected to fulfill Diddy's personal desires, usually, you know, through sexual gratification, enabling Diddy and other members of the enterprise to engage in the various unlawful acts previously stated, 
protecting members of the enterprise from law prosecution through various acts like intimidation, bribery, coercion, as well as threats of retaliation against individuals who witnessed the crimes of the enterprise. Pages six through eight detail the means and methods that the Combs Enterprise used to, you know, go through with these acts. They used the power and prestige of Diddy's name to lure in female victims, usually under the pretense of a, some sort of romantic relationship with him, just to, you know, get them in his orbit. He would then use coercion, force, or threats of force to force these female victims to engage in acts with these male workers that he had transported. He called these freak-offs. Freak-offs were elaborate and produced performances that Diddy himself arranged, directed, played with himself during, and even recorded. When arranging these freak offs, he would usually call on members of his enterprise to, you know, make the arrangements to transport these workers across state lines and even internationally. These freak offs would last for days and even consist of multiple workers. They would also administer and distribute drugs to the victims to keep them compliant and obedient. Sometimes, unbeknownst to the victims, he would even be recording these acts and use them as collateral in the future to, you know, force them to stay silent. After the freak off, members of the enterprise would administer IV fluids to the victims and the workers so that their bodies could recover from all the stuff that their bodies had been through and all that drug use. The members of the enterprise would facilitate these freak offs in a multitude of ways. They would deliver large sums of cash to Diddy so that he could pay the workers. They would book the hotel rooms and even stock them with the freak off essentials like, you know, the thousands bottles of baby oil we heard about, extra linens, lubricants, um, lighting, controlled substances. Then they would clean the rooms after the freak offs to mitigate the room damages because these these would sometimes take place in hotels. And victims were under the impression that they could not refuse Diddy's demands without risking their financial or job security or without repercussions of physical or emotional abuse. If y'all remember the lawsuit that Cassie filed last year, she literally said that Diddy would force her to participate in these freak offs too. Members of the enterprise and even, you know, Diddy himself carried firearms that they would use to threaten victims and even witnesses of the abuse who threatened to come forward. When people did threaten to come forward, they were met with bribery, violence, acts of violence, threats of abuse, you know, threats of financial harm, reputational harm. These threats of violence included kidnapping and arson. Let's note that back when Cassie briefly dated Kid Cudi, Diddy had that man's car blown up in the driveway. Pages 9 and 10 go into, you know, the racketeering conspiracy. If you don't know what racketeering is, watch my last video. But basically, the activities that the enterprise, you know, engaged in affected interstate and foreign commerce. And they knowingly combined, conspired, and agreed to violate the racketeering laws of the United States. Doing so through multiple acts of kidnapping, bribery, da 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 da. We already know. Page 11 is just this statement right here just says that he knowingly recruited and enticed somebody known as victim one to engage in commercial acts. And they're saying that Diddy did this knowing that the person was coerced or forced into doing these acts. Page 12 just goes more into him, you know, transporting people for his freak offs. And pages 13 and 14 just go into how if he is found guilty, he will have to forfeit um, certain assets to the United States government. In short, if convicted, he'd have to give up all his assets to the United States government that he obtained through these illegal acts, which is probably all of his assets. And just states that if they can't be found or if he moved them to somebody else's name or transferred them or whatever, that the United States will come after other assets of his to cover up what was lost. In conclusion, Diddy is a very, very freaky man who is probably going away for a very, very long time as he should. It's about time you know that something is being done about this because it's been known for a very very long time and nobody's been doing anything but you know i like to think that 
when they don't do stuff for a very, very long time and then they come out, that's because they know they got you. So honestly, I really think, you know, this might be the end of the road for him. I have a problem sleeping to this day. Like, yo, man, I'm here to work, man. I ain't saying in a week. I mean, I'm 13 years old and I'm telling him, look, you're going to put me in the studio, man. You got Biggie Smalls in there. You got Craig Mack in there. I'm not here to party with you. I don't want to go to the clubs. I'm, matter of fact, I'm too young to even be in here. Why you? You got me in clubs. We what? would fight. We would tussle. <laughs> and what that's like. Puffy's place was like just filled with chicks and orging like nonstop, right? It was curious. I got a chance to see some things. This video that Stevie J posted talking about this is what a real Diddy party looks like. This is top tier dry snitching or undercover blackmail because why he putting these people out there like that right in the mid in the midst of everything going on you got two of the car jenners okay we got pharrell kanye jay-z they popping bottles they having a good old time um dre and his ex-wife or wife i don't know um but yeah what what was it what was your intention behind this video at this current time i think it's to say like y'all mother better come out and support him before i put y'all on blast before i put y'all on blast and put y'all business out there because now he's feeling a way about being the only to like stand by diddy and be seen with diddy in his time because it's like as much rich powerful friends have you got why is no one saying anything all these people are at your 50th birthday party celebrating with you doing all this stuff with you but now everybody nobody got nothing to say why is that so i think stevie feels a way about that and he put this out there like y'all better speak the fuck up before we all be put on blast what do y'all think oh, 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 oh. this was just weird excuse me i need the phone Stand up. The mysterious death of Melvin Combs can be traced all the way back to a drug conspiracy case in 1972. When according to reports, seven men and three women were charged in a $5 million a year heroin ring in Harlem, the Bronx, and Westchester County. And according to reports, Melvin Combs was a part of this crew. And according to a New York Times article in 1973, everyone got locked up but Melvin and when Melvin did eventually go to jail for possession of heroin and $45,000 in cash. He was quickly released, but a week later, he was found dead in his car with two bullets to the head. Detectives believe that the 1972 murder of Melvin Combs, a co-conspirator in the case, might ultimately be traced back to members of the heroin distributing conspiracy, largely due to the fact that they believe that Melvin snitched on his entire crew. I have a strange theory as to why all the things are going wrong for the take that, take that man. And I need you to stay with me here because I have a point. Back in 2009, there was a little animated movie came out called Princess and the Frog, stay with me. And there was a character called the Shadow Man. And the Shadow Man, he went around telling people fortunes, setting them up for bad deals so that he can garner souls that gave him power for his friends on the other side. Y'all remember about a year ago or so, Diddy went on TikTok and Instagram talking about he's looking for new souls and he was creating, well, not new souls. He was looking for new talent, influencers. He wanted writers. He wanted media people to help him with a new project. And everybody was kind of like, mm, no, no, because he's had a history of giving people bad contracts, bad deals, you know, not paying people their money, ruining people's lives, people going missing. And now everything's coming to a head. 
I'm not saying I see a similarity. I'm not saying that's not, you know, I'm not, I'm not making no inferences. I'm just saying, y'all remember that? Wow. There's a lot that could be said about Diddy, Puff Daddy, Sean Combs, Love, whatever you want to call him. But one thing I could say when I see all of this, he has some creepy vibes about himself. And a lot of these allegations, we're starting to see a lot of this stuff is true. Now, it might be a lot of stuff trumped up here and there because of just these charges. But when we really take a look at who this man really is and what he was doing behind the scenes, it spooks me out. You guys leave a comment down below and let me know how you guys feel on this whole situation. Do you think that he's going to beat this case or do you think he's going to do life? What do you guys think? Let me know down below. Until next time, it's your boy Mickey Fenty, aka Mickey Made It. And if you're new to this channel, you know what to do to this channel. Subscribe right 